This is James Mathers for the Digital Cinema Society at Cinegear Expo 2023. I'm here with Tony Wisniewski, and uh, he's going to tell us about uh, the philosophy and the little history and all the new products from Zeiss. Hey, hey, Jim. Nice to see you again. Yeah, no, I thought I'd bring a, a lot of different pieces of the history of Zeiss with me today um, so we could talk about how, how Zeiss has really developed, how we approach optics uh, and how we approach supporting the community of creators that use our products. So uh, what, we're starting here with a little camera. Yeah. So back in the day, Zeiss was always third party to other companies. Um, you know, we started by making lenses for cameras uh, and for camera manufacturers. Um, I like this little Rolly 35S uh, because it's a it's a 40, fil 40 millimeter lens that uh, Zeiss designed. And it was really kind of how things started for us, uh, it, putting our glass in front of cameras so that people could really start to uh, create with a, a new style look. But even before that, it was microscope technology, right? Going back like 100 years? Yeah, absolutely. That's where Carl started it back in the day is he, when you made uh, microscopes back then, if it didn't work, you broke it and you started new. Uh, and he thought there's got to be a better way, a more consistent in, uh, way to produce uh, on, a, on a larger scale. So he and his friend Ernst Abe and Otto Schott got together and, and started what we know today as the modern optics manufacturing pro processes. And this is a smaller uh, still camera lens? Those are. Those are showing when we started to manufacture lenses under our own name, we started with what we now call the classics. Uh, most people talk to them as the engineering concepts, the Distagons or the Biagon, uh, Teletessar. And those were the concepts that Ernst Abe came up with um, to define how we build the lens stack within the housing. And those are the engineering concepts that everybody uses today. Now you call it uh, Zeiss Cinematography, the, the division that you work with, and, and you, I see some beautiful cinema lenses here. We do, and what's, what's happened is as those have advanced, we really build on form, fit, and function. Um, every lens we build, every design that comes together is, is built for purpose. So what you're seeing here is a few of the newer uh, photography style lenses, but also the newer cinematography lenses, um, and they give us a look. You know, a lot of people now are looking for something different, something, something vintage give me something I can work with, some character. And that's what the Supreme Prime and the Supreme Prime Radiance are built to do. They, uh, they still um, um, employ those engineering concepts, but what we've done is we've adjusted them through the housings or the modifications of the stack. And it, most importantly, the, uh, the T-Star coatings, the, uh, the lens coatings themselves to give the cinematographer something within the lens that they can grasp, but that they can work with to to, to build themselves into the productions that they're shooting. I see a metadata connector here. So that's a big part of it. Right? That is, everything's about down to the data these days. Uh, and what Zeiss has done is given you the ability as the creator, as the VFX artist, to utilize the data that we know about so that you can get it more quickly. Um, and in our, in our way of looking at it, gone are the days of shooting charts at the beginning, uh, you know, and, and taking one or two points and adjusting your entire LUT based on what it might look like if you stripped away the, the, the things you like the lens for the shading and distortion. We actually give that to you. It's already pre-mapped out. The lens knows its own data. And that metadata is using the Cook slash I protocol to give you lens shading and distortion at your fingertips. So ultimately it's the click of a button. You can remove the shading and distortion in Nuke or whatever uh, VFX program you're using. Um, do your match moving, do your compositing, and then add the look of the lens back on with another simple click. Um, it's that easy and that cost effective. And it goes frame by frame. It does. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you know, you, you don't have to guess anymore. It's right there. It's much more accurate and it makes your job easier. Now, these lenses, these look like they might be for mirrorless cameras and, and then cinematography and still cameras are, are merging these days. They are, you know, and that's one of the interesting things is a, a lot of times that DSLR concept is uh, everything is getting smaller and smaller, including the uh, the back focal distance. Um, so while we're still using PL mounts, you know, we are able um, in some of the lenses to get even closer, you know, to 16, 17 millimeters like the Sony E mount. And our lenses are adaptable and configured in some applications to be specific to those lens mounts. 
And you also have uh, focus assist or autofocus. Yeah, there is some of that, but that com- that comes into play now with with what uh, Sony's offering. We actually capitalize on that ability for eye tracking or subject tracking. Um, the autofocus lenses of, of our Batis line work very well with that, and they're very light. They'll fly on a drone. They'll um, they're easy to gimbal or steady cam mount. Um, they're really excellent lenses for for that autofocus application. Um, sounds like Zeiss has us covered. Absolutely, and more to come. Thank you, Tony. My pleasure. Thanks, Jim.